Hello friends, in this particular episode, we will see the emerging challenges in family court. And today I have with me advocate Renu Shukla, who is practicing since 1999 exclusively in Bandra family court, Mumbai. So she is practicing nearly for 25 years exclusively. I am using the word exclusively. So we will hear from her the basic history and then we will have a dialogue with her. So first thing, uh, Renuji, thank you very much for so giving your you time to us. thank you for calling me in this uh, Now, I would like to hand over it to you that please tell us the history of the family court. Uh, as I said, first of all, I would like to thank to sir to give me this opportunity to be here on this YouTube channel on his. Uh, regarding family court, uh, if I say family court establishment, family court, before that we go to the original, hmm. ki when society has formed, that time also there is a matrimonial dispute. Correct. People are having several dispute, matrimonial problems and Correct. they are resolving this dispute within themselves only, within yes. forming committee, society, you know. Uh, they are resolving all the dispute. That time they did not realize that they need a family court or yeah, mm -hmm. something like this way. This family court, uh, the need of this family will emerge slowly, gradually when the society started building day by day. Mm -hmm. And society enhanced these changes are started coming in between. So, society, since society uh, started uh, developing and this problem started arising, sir, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. We uh, start from there. Society started developing, the problem started starting. Correct. Sir. So, one woman who is a very strong lady, the, who she is also advocate, name is Ramabai Deshmukh. Mm -hmm. She happens to be uh, foreign countries where she saw how the family court was there, mm -hmm. how this family court was uh, uh, dealing with this family dispute differently from the other matter. Mm -hmm. She found very, 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 very particular, very mannerly mm -hmm. how this family dispute are dealing in the foreign country different footings. Okay. Then she emphasized establishing family courts in India. Okay. And on her emphasis, sir, the family court uh, committee was uh, formed. The committee name in name was something like this way, Committee on Status of Women. Okay. The committee has formed the name of committee is the Committee on Status of Women. Women. After this committee recommendation, mm -hmm. the Family Court Act was passed. Okay. After this committee recommendation, the Family Court Act was passed. And this committee was formed in the year 1975, sir. Okay. First committee has come, this only committee. Mm -hmm. After this committee, the committee recommended and then Family Court Act was passed. passed. The Family Court Act was passed in the year 1984. Okay. When this act was passed in the year 1984, there are no family court. Mm -hmm. The matters mostly deal by the district courts only. In, in okay. Bombay, it was city civil court. You know, okay. The first family court established in India in Rajasthan. Okay. In the okay. year 1985. Okay. The first after establishing family court in the year 1984, the first family court established in Rajasthan in the year 1985. In Mumbai, Mm -hmm. It has come and established in the year 1989, okay. Bandra BKC, which is known to everyone nowadays. Okay. The first family was established in the family court, Bandra Kurla Congress, 1889. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was established sir, with a few courts, uh, I think three to four courts. So, slowly, gradually, the courts are more built up mm -hmm. in the same building, the whole building given the family court. Mm -hmm. And there are at this juncture, there are seven courts, okay. which are functioning. Okay. So, from right, Bandra. From Bandra. Dealing with all the matrimonial dispute mm -hmm. within limitation of jurisdiction of Mumbai. Okay. Uh, one thing I would like to ask you here is uh, the family court Mumbai. Everyone can file the family dispute over there. That means Sikh, Jain, mm -hmm. uh, that way I am asking. Uh, family court uh, Bandra Mumbai, it deal with all the matrimonial dispute except the Parsis. The okay. committee of Pass is not entitled to file their petition over their jurisdiction not lies in this family court. Okay. This goes to the high court. But rest of other people, mm -hmm. I'll tell you one more thing, how the Hindus are defined. Mm -hmm. To define Hindu is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Who are the Hindus? Mm -hmm. Define is very difficult. The law committee has defined the Hindu, the person who was not Jew, Muslim, Sikh and Parsis. Okay. Say wrong Jara. Who is not that is a Hindu. Ha. The Muslims, Jew. And Parsis okay. are not Hindus. Okay. And rest others are Christians. Mm -hmm. These are the four things Jew, Muslim, Christians, and Parsis. Okay. They are not Hindu. Rest all are uh, Hindus. Hindu. Okay. So these people come from the Hindu 
and they are entitled to file this matrimonial dispute in matrimonial court, family court. You know. But uh, even a person who is Christian and uh, Muslim can file a divorce petition yes, in here. Bandra yeah. family court? They are not Hindu, but they are entitled to file divorce petition in family court Bandra except the Parsi. Okay. Parsi are in minority, they are having special power, so this power is given to the high court. They okay. are dealing with that power. Okay. Or, uh, ये जो क्रिश्चियन कम्युनिटी है या या मोमेडियन कम्युनिटी है तो इनके डिवोर्स के लॉज अलग हैं हाँ उनके भी अपने डिवोर्स के लॉ हैं हर एक के जितने भी जितने भी सेक्ट हैं हिंदू हुए क्रिश्चियंस हुए जीव हुए पार्सीस हुए इंडियन क्रिश्चियन के इंडियन डिवोर्स सेक्ट होते हैं मुस्लिम के भी पर्सनल लॉज and one more thing, the people who are not having any, any uh, sect, mm -hmm. they are not Hindu also, they are not Muslim also. Mm -hmm. Suppose the couples got married with the Hindu mm -hmm. and with the Christian. Mm -hmm. One is Hindu, one is Christian. Mm -hmm. So where they will go? For that kind of people mm -hmm. who are not having, belong to particular act, a particular community, so that kind of people, they are supposed to file their divorce petition in the special marriage act. Okay. This is a special act meant for the people who are belong to different caste and community. Okay. In this act, if they get registered also, they are not supposed to change their uh, names, castes. Oh, the caste Cast remain where it is. Remain as it is. I am not supposed to change my caste after my marriage. It is okay. supposed to remain as it is. Which according to me, I want to ask you that if a person is doing a registered marriage, hmm. <coughs> before registrar of marriage, hmm. there they have to tell that yes, I am a Hindu and the other people say I am a Christian and we are marrying under uh, that special act. Yes, yes, they are supposed to be. So for the certi special certificate act, will uh, yes, show special that. Act. Special marriage. They marriages. are supposed to register their marriage and a special marriage act. Act is there. Okay. And in there is a compulsory one month notice supposed to be given. Hmm. After one month notice, they are supposed to go before the register and they just sign the register of. Okay. The signing of register is self proof that you got married under this act. Not supposed to exchange the garland, not supposed to exchange the rings, anything formalities. Okay. There is no, no rituals there. Okay. Simple signing of register is completing their marriage. Okay. And this committee, uh, this registrar issued the certificate under this act. Okay. And by virtue of this act, they become a married people. Okay. And one more thing, once you register your marriage under this act, Special marriage act. Then you are going to go on by this act only. Okay. You are not supposed to come back. I am, you know, Hindu. I am supposed to go on by the Hindu marriage act. I am Muslim. I am supposed to go on the Muslim marriage. No way. Once you register this act, you are going to go on by virtue of this act only. Okay. So even the divorce petition would be filed under this act. This act only. Anything. Okay. Anything. Yes. Pertaining to this only. Okay. One more important feature of this special act, suppose you have got married under this act, you are going to be, uh, you are not going to, you are not in such a category to receive any benefit from your uh, ancestral properties or yeah, uh, your mm -hmm. parental properties. Okay. Yeah. Mother, you are uh, excluded from their right, all these things. Uh, this is one of the... Like, like for example, suppose you a Hindu and a Christian have married huh. under this act. So that particular Hindu... Huh. He cannot claim under yes. Hindu Succession Act. Yes, they are excluded from the benefit all these things. Okay. One uh, is there. Okay. Now I would like to ask you, what are the types of litigation which are there in family court? Sir, so in family court they have categorized the uh, you know matter come before them. First category is come under A, the hmm. people who are filing for divorce, mm -hmm. who may be from any sect, from any act. Any act. As I said, special act, Indian Divorce Act, Muslim, what it may be, it will come under category of A. A means divorce. Then come category of B. B means injunction. Hmm. Taking injunction against any property, any kind of disputes. Okay. C for maintenance. Okay. Maintenance may be any act. Okay. Any act means there are several acts like hmm. Hindu Adoption Act, hmm -hmm. 125. You know, these are the acts where okay. the maintenance is entitled. So they will come under the category of C. Okay. C, thereafter come D. Mm -hmm. D is meant for the custody purpose. Okay. Whoever filed the custody purpose, they get the uh, number D and D so, so and so. 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 Yes. D, thereafter it will come e. e. E again only meant for the maintenance purpose. Who are going to file under 125 CRPC. E means 125 Ex exclusive CRPC. Exclusive 125. 125 CRPC. Okay. So these e. are the uh, A, B, C, D, E and lastly it is F. Okay. F means the mutual petition. 
okay. the people who are coming from filing mutual petition under come under this category okay these are the categories <coughs> of uh, yes thing. litigation over there okay uh, now with this basic idea of the formation now we'll try to enter our topic of emerging challenges hmm. online filings are now being compulsory so how is that working overall in the family court hmm. sir online filing is a very good idea introduced by the government mm -hmm. if you'll see in a longer point of time mm -hmm. in future is going to facilitate to everyone not litigant also as well uh, court staff advocates litigant everyone going to facilitate with this facility but right now we are facing several problems mm -hmm. because of many things see uh, uh, after covid hmm. after covid mostly we are moved towards the online phase. online filing because yes. after covid covid has made the people to do the online work yes, yes. so in family could also they are started doing the online things mm -hmm. we are sitting in the home filing everything and doing everything doing the covid also slowly gradually we are in habit of doing all this but not adopted that kind of practice mm -hmm. but nowadays since uh, uh, november aya yeah, november the high court has made compulsory of e filing okay. this physical filing is totally stopped stopped okay. we have to go for e court filing only okay. compulsory okay now e court filing when compulsory at the same time we are not having all the infrastructures hmm. though government has set up everywhere all the court is one center for e filing the lady was already lady or someone is there who is going to help you for filing e filing and they have uh, supposed to charge something which is already recommended by the court only this already authorized charges are there they are supposed to pay that we okay. supposed to pay that and get our filing to be done okay but how long we could do this kind of practice mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. help of the other and do the filing mm -hmm. but still someone is there who are helping us so in all the court there is one center and mm -hmm. because of one center we are feeling very difficult there is a long queue and apart from this because of internet problem internet hmm. frequency is not over there because at home we are having good kind of internet quality is good but in government sector we are not in that kind of internet facilities hmm. see nowadays so every family court yeah every court they have established a center for e filing purpose so there is one particular person who is sitting over there helping you for filing e send they are charging what are the charges are applicable or recommended by the court so they are charging and they are helping you for but still in spite of that while uploading the papers we are finding a difficulty mm -hmm. is not immediately we uploaded and we get the number it mm -hmm. takes times mm -hmm. every time we are supposed to check when we getting number particularly mm -hmm. so apart from loading uploading we are having several other problems also suppose we are filing petition we are filing joint petition mutual petition mm -hmm. and i have filed petition on your id mm -hmm. so you are only going to see what is update of the matter i cannot log your my id okay the one on the second problem apart from the internet facility ya yeah, e court filing system the family court matters are not you know rojnama uh, rojnama name of the parties we are not displaying yeah, they are not uploading you know. mm -hmm. they are not uploading these things on online because the privacy of the parties this is one of the reason they are not uploading but because the same time we are finding it difficult because everything rojna we can check out from rojnama for that we again go to the certified copy take out the certified copy check it out Mm -hmm. So they are supposed to upload the rojnama properly on online, mm -hmm. and regarding disclosing, not disclosing name of the parties, I don't think there is any harm of disclosing the party on online, because mm. these are the matter litigated, and once they are coming in the court, they are supposed to be public property, they are supposed to be open, mm -hmm. and not openly on the all the matter supposed to be open broadly. Correct. But what are the necessary name of the parties, rojnama, some orders mm -hmm. is supposed to be uploaded. Correct. so we at least facilitate what the government planning futures okay so this thing is still lacuna in family court matters because okay. of privacy they are maintaining all these things okay but at the same time we are finding difficulties also okay apart from this if court filing uh, if you see that there are other problems also suppose one more matter is there where parties are deaf and dumb hmm they are not blind hmm they are deaf and dumb so how these people are going to upload the matter suppose we are uploaded uploading this one of the clause they are supposed to take oath also online oath hmm. so they are not able to take oath correct but if it is physical filing we have taken the oath because the registrar supposed to ask them you tumhi he he vachle ahat ka hecha de lile te barobar ahat ka hmm. then he must have say yes it is barobar 
He must mm. nod his head and given his consent. Mm -hmm. But here it is finding difficult. And for that particular, we are supposed to appoint a guardian and do the filing. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is one of the difficulties we are okay. facing. Okay. In, one of the difficulties we are facing. In case, as rightly said by Defendam, I would like to say that are interpreters given to them during their uh, trials or something? See, depend upon the person to person. Here, deaf and dumb, they need interpreter. Okay. They need it. They need it. Yes, they need it. They are and given for that, by the we court. have to appoint the guardian. Okay. That way. Uh, no doubt, these parties with the visa having, they are able to read and write. Correct. But they are not able to speak. Speak. So, how we are going to make a communication? Okay. Uh, for that person, we need that. Okay. Uh, now, uh, as I am mean seeing, you know, since last 20, 30 years, the scenario all over India has changed. Yes. Like last uh, 25 years back, the number of people employed outside India hmm. was much less. Yes. But today, because of globalization yes. and all this, there are huge people staying out of India. So, do party we say, koi bhi ek party out of India ho sakegi. So, what I want to ask you is, when a party files a litigation in India and the other party is out of India, how do you ensure that particular litigation is being served to him? If you come to the service purpose, before the uh, e-filing, uh, internet facility, yeah, we, are saying we are doing all these things, there is a service. We can serve through the Indian Embassy. We can, if you are having proper address of the particular party who is staying abroad, hmm. we can serve through the postal also. Okay. If we get the proper postal acknowledgement, the service is done. Okay. Suppose in that case, we are not done the service through the postal acknowledgement. What it may be reason? Because address may be not proper, yeah, he is not found, what it may be. Then we have to take the Indian help of the Indian Embassy. Okay. We have to serve the paper through the Indian Embassy. Okay. And that we can get, get the service to be done on that particular person. Okay. Uh, just a technical clarification. Uh -huh. So, the summons would be addressed for service to Indian Embassy in that through. country? Not, it's not addressed, it's through. Okay. It's through? Through. It okay. will go through the Indian Embassy. Okay, so they, they will do yes, the service yes, over yes. there. Through the Indian Embassy. It is goes to the Indian Embassy and that particular thing is going to be served that particular person. Okay. But after e-filing, hmm. yeah, after I can say the COVID, we are facilitated by the e-service, yeah, online services. Okay. So, you can sell the service now online by through the mail. Mail is supposed to be working position. Hmm. And then you are supposed to uh, ensure that a particular person using the mail in active form. Okay. You know, simply he has not used the email for so many years hmm. and you are hmm. serving and so in the code we have served the summons through the air. No. Okay. You are supposed to serve the uh, mail which is in active position. We serve the summons through the WhatsApp also, but supposed to be everything on working position. And at the same time, we are supposed to file our affidavit. We have to serve a summons in this manner. Okay. So, we can turn the service through easily by this way also. Email and WhatsApp yes. also is allowed. Yes. Uh, now, the next consequential question which arises is the party who is out of India hmm. and they want to file their reply, they want to file their WS. So, the affirmation of that particular written statement or reply, uh, ca can it be done in the Indian embassy? Yes. The party who is staying abroad, they can file not in a WS written statement, they can file petition also. <laughs> petition also, <laughs> but it is supposed to be affirmed before the Indian Embassy, concerned okay. government. Okay. If you, wherever he is staying, he is <laughs> supposed to affirm before the Indian Embassy. Once it is affirmed, it is sent to, back to the concerned lawyer, authority is given to them. At the same time, power for the non needed advocate can file, but still, for safer cell, we appoint a power for attorney, through that, we file the petition. Okay. We can file that. In the same manner, regarding written statement, yeah, any reply, he can affirm, <laughs> send to the Indian uh, person who is staying over here, he can file through that. Okay. Yeah, he is concerned lawyer, I can say. Okay. He can file that. Now, uh, taking this example or this thought ahead, supposing a maintenance petition has been filed by wife hmm. and the husband is out of India, the order is passed of maintenance. Hmm. Now, how do you ensure that execution of that order happens because he is far away in other country? How that execution is done of that order? Same way as we are doing in India also, same manner, is just like it is abroad. Again, hmm. first is goes to the, suppose he is a person, a salary person. Hmm. We send the salary attachment order to him, to directly to his office. And if the office attaches salary, our work to be done. 
suppose some reason the company is not doing that kind of work, they are avoiding or something, again we have to send a summons, salary attachment order through the Indian embassy okay. and take the help of Indian embassy to do all these things. Okay. Um, now I want to ask you whether the trials are conducted by using the video conferencing and uh, all these methods. Yes, the answer is very positive, yes. The COVID, after COVID, we are started doing all kind of practice. Mm -hmm. During COVID, we are, all, almost we are doing all this practice. Mm -hmm. COVID, we are supposed to sit at home, do the practice on online only. So during that time only, we started doing the trials, arguments, everything online. Okay. Which continue now only. Okay. And for this uh, video conferencing trial, are they done by the judges or uh, by commissioners? Suppose we are supposed to make an application for that in the court. You okay. know, simply court allow you go. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to make an application by giving proper reason, then they allow. The courts are not having that much time mm -hmm. to sit uh, separately and do the conduct Correct. of trials. So for that purpose, they are appointing the counsellors. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they are appointing the commissioners. Commissioners. Counsellors also as can be act as a commissioner. But okay. counsellors also having so much work load. Mm -hmm. So they are not appointed counsellors. So mostly they appoint the private lawyers okay. to, as to act as a commissioner. Okay. So this commissioner conduct the cross online. Okay. Where the other side lawyer, this lawyer, everyone sitting. There is one chamber already given for trial purpose. Mm -hmm. So they are in the court premises only. They are not supposed to go anybody home and do all these things. Okay. They are supposed to give a premise in the court itself to conduct the trial online. Mm -hmm. The commissioner recall all the questions answered by the opposite party in the cross. And they are supposed to give the report along with the cross taken by them to the court. Okay. And this is a... Uh, very authentically, but this is not going to be prejudiced by anyone. Okay. Just like a judge, they are acting and giving a report to the court. Okay. And it is binding both the parties. Oh, correct. Now, one more uh, thought is, uh, if both the parties are out of India, hmm. can they file a mutual divorce consent in India or rather in Bandra family court, if yes, both sir. are out of yes, India? Yes, sir. Why not? If both the parties out of India, initially after COVID, uh, that time also, before COVID also, when one party is out of India, we are filing. But that time, judges are insisting at least one party is supposed to be in India before us. Hmm, hmm. That time, they are insisting. It's not like a mandatory, but hmm. like a, just make a more precautionary way they are insisting. Okay. After COVID, when all in facilities are there, so they are allowing now. If the parties are also in India, they done their paperwork through the Indian embassy, hmm. they get affirmed before that, hmm. and they can file through the power portal through the lawyer to Indian courts. Okay. So, they yeah. may not be required to travel from that particular no, country no. to India? The only condition is they are supposed to have a jurisdiction over here. Okay, yeah, obviously, yeah. That, obviously that is the main yes. Uh, yes. aspect of it. Yes. But it can be, it is yes. possible. Yes, it is possible. Okay. Now, one question which I would like to ask is, you, know, you are in practice since last 25 years. So, you must have seen petitioners who have filing petition for divorce. At times by mutual consent, at times by contesting. So once they get the divorce order, are they really satisfied or happy with that order? Or how do they take their life? What do you feel about that? Because you are into this practice, I am yes, asking sir. it. Uh, if I answer this question, it depends on the, what kind of order they are getting. Hmm, hmm, hmm. What kind of order they are getting. If they are simply finally mutual, they are really Bound to be happy because they what they want, they have got it. So, if it is contested, it depends upon the order. Mm -hmm. if, suppose they have, uh, you know, they have got the divorce, but at the same time, they have not, uh, they have not received the custody of the child. They are uh, supposed to be a higher side of maintenance. So, again, they are happy. Mm -hmm. So, it depends upon the many things about the order. But if I ask me the general things, whether after getting the divorce degree in their hand, are the people are happy? If you want to simplify this yeah. answer. Yes. And I will not go in technical issues. Correct. I will just simplify if after getting divorce paper in their hand, are the people are happy? The answer is like that. It depends upon again person to person. Mm -hmm. It's not like simply we can see yes, they are very happy. No, it's mm -hmm. not like a marriage and they are having Ladu in their hand. Mm -hmm. They are loss of many things. Mm -hmm. The people are happy in some way. They are sad in other way. I will define this in one simple language. One simple language, sir. Ki matrimonial disputes are in such a kind, in such a category where both are loser and both are winner. Rightly I said think that. this answer will sum up everything Correct. what you expect. It has everything into it. Yes. The both are loser, both are winner. They have lost something, they have lost something, and they have won something. Won something. Won something, they have moved further in their life with some other positive goal and lost something what they are having in their hand. 
family bondage. I think it's nicely said yes. by you. Both are winners and both, both are, are losers. Both are losers. So family court, there is no actual fighting. It's the actual mm -hmm. war between the people to winner and losers. Both are losers over here. In a uh, water form, they file their petition. Uh, uh, it is custody, divorce, maintenance. What it may form. Okay. Both in that category, sir. Uh, so giving no. answer, this question is very tough. <laughs> we can. No, but you have rightly answered it. Yeah. We can yeah. sum up with this only, both are winner and both are loser over here. Okay. Now I will come to the slowly concluding part of our talk. Now since you are there since last 25 years exclusively in mm -hmm. Bandra family court, what kind of a change of functioning you feel or you don't feel any change of functioning for last 25 years when you started in 1999 and today in 2024? What changes do you feel have happened? Again, I'll answer the question very simplified. Earlier it was a manual, now it is a mechanical. That is it. Earlier everything is done by the manual way. Mm -hmm. the, suppose uh, if, people, if the code is conducting the cross, it is written by the uh, you know, steno. Steno. Yeah, typed by the steno. Now it is computerized, everything computerized. But again, the same thing, the one problem we just continue till now is the staff. Okay. The scarcity of staff, the expertise in staff which still hurdles the main functioning of the course. Okay. Always course is having less staff and more work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And these difficulties still carry on. Okay. Though there are changes, we have moved ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll give some example. In the family court, we are having, uh, uh, outside the court, we are having monitors where we can watch our numbers, just like a high court in having. Mm. This is facilitated for the litigation purpose to have a peaceful audience. But no, no monitors working till now. I have not seen any monitors working. Okay. Okay. The speakers are there. The court have, the government has spent so much money to give the speakers to the court. The speakers set aside and people are still shouting. Okay. They are not using their speakers. Okay. The e-courts for to know your matter more particularly what kind of matter. They have already established the uh, computer system, some sort of, you know, desktop. Every mm -hmm. every floors, the desktop never work. Up. Okay. Ha, it's never working. So the goat is there. Government is trying to work out more amount to improve our facilities. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, because of lack of uh, staffs, kahenge ya technical problems, kahenge expertise, kahenge this system is still shut down. Okay. So. So uh, these are the things. Is there earlier it was manual. It is now mechanical because of lack of staff, lack of expertise. This function is not properly. Okay. So, As I feel. Okay. So it's this is my personal opinion. These are some problems which need to be cured. Yes. Because government government is spending this money on these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to utilize that. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to utilize that. This for us only. And it's our money. Correct. Our, for our benefit. Correct. So why these things are set up? Why the speakers are set aside? Why this one is not working? Correct. Yes. So Renuji. Uh, and then now, I would for more things, sir, you must be not knowing. Belief, they are given the mobiles to send the summons through the mobiles also. Correct. Okay. Government, uh, now judges are, they are taking, they are given the laptops, you know, special laptop to do the functioning on laptops. So, these are things provided to them, but they are not, they are not uh, taught in that manner to use that now. Okay. So, they need experts to teach all these things and come in proper functioning of the court. Okay. So but it will take time. We are visioning future a paperless court. Okay. Simplified. What the move is there? Online facilities, yeah, e code filing service. These are all the moving towards the paperless courts in future. Hundred percent e codes in India. E code service. So they are starting. Everywhere starting is a difficult so the difficulty we are facing. We are the person facing this problem. Maybe in future our new generation, the new law will come, they will facilitate for all these problems. Exactly. They, they will they will utilize these facilities. But we are facing the problem right now. Okay. Uh, so Renuji, it was very nice speaking to you. Yeah, Same you yes, have sir. given us the overall view starting from the how family courts came, what is is there in that. So we are very thankful for that. And just a small Thank you, sir. Momento Thank you. from Hamurabi to you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs>